And from that 1982 until now, um, we've had about um, 14 deans. You know, 14 persons have occupied the position of the dean of the faculty. Until 2020, when I came on board as the 15th dean of the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Um, so, um, you know, if you look at the, the, the trajectory um, of the faculty from inception, I think we've made a lot of progress. You know, with just a few staff that we had at inception and just a few students. Um, today, uh, the faculty has uh, an admission quota of about 200, you know, approved by the Pharmacist Council of Nigeria. Um, and then, as we speak, the faculty has about 121 academic staff. And, the, and uh, about uh, about about 60 non-academic staff. And uh, among these uh, 120 academic staff, we have about 33, 33 professors and about five associate professors. Um, that makes it the most heavily staffed faculty of pharmacy in, in any Nigerian university. No Nigerian university has that number of academic staff or has that number of professors. And not just for any professors, but these are we're talking about professors who know their onions, you know, high-flying professors, professors who can hold their head high anywhere, uh, professors who are, who um, have published widely internationally, you know, professors who are recognized in their own fields, you know, who have been heavily cited by their peers all over the world. Of course, this is not you know it's not easy to. Track. You can track them through the Google Scholar citations. And the professors who have also won a number of awards, accolades. You know, I remember in the 80s, you know, one of our deans then won an award, what they call the Rolex Award for Enterprise, by Professor Lucky Odala, you know, who was the second dean after Professor Kubo. And the, 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 the awards have continued to come in. And in 2006, one of us, Professor Adiko, won the Nigerian, the maiden edition of the Nigeria Prize for Science in 2006. And several of our staff you know, have been um, fellows, uh, fellows of the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, Tinebul in Germany. At the last count, about seven professors here have gone through the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation Fellowship, uh, including my humble self, who was there between 2007 and 2009. So, and um, um, we have made quite a number of uh, I recorded quite a number of successes, you know, in terms of training of manpower in, in the pharmaceutical subsector, and then in terms of scholarship, in terms of research, you know, we've done quite a lot. Even though we started with five departments at inception, when it became a, full, a, a, a fully fledged uh, faculty, that as we speak, uh, there are now seven departments in the faculty. In 1999, there was an additional department, Department of, of Clinical Pharmacy and Pharmacy Management, which was carved out from the already existing Department of Pharmacy and Psychology. And then in 2007, uh, 2016, um, the last department to, took off, the Department of Pharmaceutical, Microbiology and Biotechnology, uh, which also was carved out from the Department of Pharmaceutics. So at the moment, we have seven departments. We are the only pharmacy school in Nigeria that has seven departments. Others have either five or six, or at least six. We, are, we have seven departments, you know, with um, well qualified personnel in those in those departments. The pharmacy program from its inception was a five-year program. This has enabled students to be well grounded in both scientific and professional aspects of pharmacy. It is worth noting that the Pharmacist Council of Nigeria has ordered all the schools, faculties of pharmacy in Nigerian universities to adopt a five-year undergraduate program. Today, the faculty has postgraduate programs at master's and doctorate PhD levels in all the departments and has graduated students at both levels. At the moment of graduation, the student's joy of realizing the goal of being a pharmacist is second to none. The challenge of limited office space, student classrooms, and research laboratories had been a harrowing experience for the faculty. For many years, the faculty had many of its space located in prefabricated buildings. 
course, it, yeah, everything has not been rosy. It's not all rosy everywhere. Um, there is this. There's, there's a challenge of facilities shortage. Of initially, we had a shortage of manpower facilities. You know, initially, uh, but um, um, during the reign, the tenure of uh, Professor Zumba, the number of academic staff you know, jumped from about 60 to this the current 120. So in terms of manpower, you know, the faculty now has enough manpower. You know, to take care of the, um, the I mean, the need of yes, of, of our students that, that have been trained here. But then the facility in terms of lab space is still a major challenge. Our laboratories are not as big as one would expect. You know, at best can only house can only you know, can only house about forty to fifty students at a time, and some of our classes are over three hundred. 350. So the result is that now we keep running shifts, practical shifts, to accommodate to accommodate all students, to make sure that they are exposed to all the um, um, to all areas that you know that they need to be acquainted with. So laboratory space remains a challenge. Then funding too has been a problem. It's not peculiar to our faculty. I think is is the problem that you know um, yeah, that we have in all universities. Funding is a challenge. Funding, for, funding is, is, is inadequate, and funding affects the quality of teaching, what students are exposed to. It also affects the quality of research because you need to have facilities for research, the equipment, the laboratory consumables, um, reagents, um, good libraries, libraries that are well subscribed, you know, libraries that subscribe to books. E-books and e-journals. You know. So we don't have, you know, we don't have it all. You know, and that, and it's difficult also for government to provide this funding alone. So fund, fund is a major, a major challenge, and uh, it, it affects the, you know, the, uh, the, the quality of our teaching and research. Yeah. Then, then thankfully too, um, before the faculty was operating on makeshift buildings, prefabricated buildings. You know, which were I think, which, which were hardly put up after the after the Civil War, and we have you know, we remained on those uh, makeshift buildings. Thankfully, sometime in 2008, an alumna used her excellent contacts to attract the construction of the impressive pharmacy building. The building was facilitated through the intervention of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, that fund. The University of Nigeria was a direct beneficiary of the Infrastructural Development Fund in which the sum of 3.2 billion Naira was made available for the university. Part of this fund was used for building the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Science of the University of Nigeria. In 2009, when um, this building was attracted uh, through the help of a husband of one of our products, who currently is the DG of NAFDAQ, I think her husband played a role, Professor Adair, who then was a senator. So the building was, was uh, approved to be built by Ted Fund. It's supposed to be the phase one. So finally, we, we moved into this new building um, in 2017. This is a people's built building for the Faculty of Mosque Sciences. It's something we had dreamed, up, you know, dreamed about and look forward to having. And finally, we are here. We you know that we can now boast of a people's built faculty complex. We are also looking forward to the second phase. We hope that that second phase will also come because what was approved was first phase and second phase. We, we have the first phase and then looking forward to also getting the second phase. Wow. And then um, that second phase, we believe that we, when that one comes on board, the issue of uh, uh, laboratory space you know, will be a thing of the past. Because we, because we will be part of the design to ensure that we have, we have laboratory spaces and classrooms that are big enough to accommodate the, you know, the number of students that we now handle. In 2015, the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, University of Nigeria and Soka, recorded a major breakthrough in research with the production of liquid dosage forms such as Lion Methylated Spirit, Lion Gentine Violet, and Lion Methyl Salicylate Ointment. The landmark was made by the pilot production unit of the faculty. The production of solid dosage forms was in the pipeline. 
the faculty acquired 20 hectares of land which was being developed for growing medicinal plants. The faculty hopes to develop it into a world-class medicinal and tourist center. The faculty would welcome contract negotiations for production of various products for pharmaceutics companies. In early 2016, the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences commissioned a model pharmacy shop located at the Student Union Government Building, UNN. The idea of the model pharmacy was born out of the dare need for students of the faculty to have a practical exposure to community practice pharmacy. Students were to be posted to the model pharmacy in batches to understudy the practical aspect of drug retail dispensing and patient counseling. In 2019, the University of Nigeria and Soka Pharmacist Alumni Association, with its headquarters in Orlando, Florida, USA, provided lab codes to all final year students of the 2019 graduating class. This was part of the association's goal of giving back to the alma mater and its members through voluntary donations. I am um, Anthony Amechi Atama, the professor of uh, pharmaceutics and drug delivery of this university. Yeah, I have passion in uh, training pharmacists and as you know pharmacists are important members of the uh, healthcare team. To produce them and they go out to the society to produce drugs, medicines, marketing medicines, counsel patients on the use of drugs and generally promote rational drug use for a better society. In 2021, the faculty was able to acquire a donation of a tabulating machine from the 1985 set of pharmacy students who were now captains of industries and notable personalities. Another alumnus made a donation of a 27-station rotary tablet press. A giant 300 kVA power generator was also acquired within this period.